but it's never enough. And at the moment, it's nowhere near enough. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Um, thanks again to the subscribers. So, um, I recently got to 500 and it was a very lovely thing to happen. I really appreciate the support. And uh, thanks a lot for watching the videos, commenting on the videos. Sending me messages outside the videos as well. Really appreciate it. And a big shout out to some of the people I've been doing live streams with recently as well. It's been really cool. Um, also, because this is a huge book haul, this is big. I thought I'd do a big shout out to Matt from Book Pilled as well. Because um, his channel, most most of his channel, I think, is these uh, book hauls and talking about the books he's going to sell on these auctions he does. And uh, they're, they're awesome videos and you just see lots of books and you go, oh, I want to see, I want that. So he really sells the idea of a book haul video really well. So this is going to be a book haul of 42 books. 42 books. I've been very lucky lately. There's been a couple of places that have, um, I mean, one in particular, to be fair, that have had some fantastic stuff and just, you know, I just grabbed them and um, I've been really lucky. Plus, there's been a couple of new books I've bought as well. Um... So, lots to go through, 42 books to go through. There's a few um, rebuys, there's a few that I bought that I used to have when I was a teenager and don't know what happened to them, so there's a few of those, but not many, to be honest. Most of them are uh, new discoveries and opportunities to delve into some authors, again, that I haven't necessarily delved into as much as I'd like. So, I'll start with the rebuy. So, Clifford Simak City, I now have a lovely copy here so I used to have that really lovely copy with the robot and the dog on the front. There's like an Alsatian and a robot on the front. But I don't know what happened to that copy. And when I read it recently, I read it from the library. So I really wanted a copy. So now I have this copy of City. So that was cool. Uh, and then there's a... One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm about to tell you about six Harry Harrison books. So... i got uh, War with the Robots. I've never owned that, so that's really cool. So another one to add to the Harry Harrison books. I know I've read a lot of his books. So War with the Robots. Rebel in Time. I didn't buy this in time for the last time travel video, but I am going to be carrying on reading time travel stuff so that I can do a third video where I just literally pick my 30 possibly favourite books on the time travel theme. So I'm going to do that later on next year. But this could be a contender. Harry Harrison, Rebel in Time. Um, it's, uh, it says on the back, it's all about time paradox. We love time paradoxes. Um, Invasion Earth. These um, sphere science fiction ones um, have just got such fantastic covers. I used to have this. I don't know what happened to it. So it's nice to buy it again. And I had loads of these sphere science fiction books when I was a teenager. So this is Harry Harrison's Invasion Earth. And... Again, similar kind of design on the cover, but I'm, but just the layout, just the whole feel of this, it just feels like a nice little nugget to to a little story, little yarn. Planet of No Return, Harry Harrison. Um, he's good at that sort of adventure, pulpy sci-fi. Um, there's I've got two books in the to the stars trilogy, so this is a little deeper. I think I think this is a, a dystopian thing. So Homeworld is the first one. Again, never read it before. Hoping to read that for New World's November. And then I also bought Wheel World, which is the second one. So I think, from what I know, this is kind of setting up a dystopia on Earth. And in this one, the main character goes on another planet. Um, but uh, I don't know a lot about the trilogy. There's three in the trilogy, but I've got those first two. So I've got these two anyway, and I'll get the third one if I really like these. And then... So that's a bunch of Harry Harrison stuff. I found a really nice Theodore Sturgeon one that I hadn't seen before. Again, a really cool cover. Venus plus X or Venus plus 10. Should we say Venus plus 10? We'll say, we'll say Venus plus 10. I'm sure that's what I'm supposed to say. Venus plus 10. Have you read that? I've never heard of it. So it's quite nice seeing it. These are really good condition, these are, these books. James Blish, The Star Dwellers. There was quite a few James Blish books there, to be fair. 
and I just picked one because I'd already spent loads of money on these other authors. I, I thought I'd pick a James Bish book, and The Star Dwellers. Never heard of it, but I thought I'd try it out. Um, have you read that one? Let me know. And a couple of Philip Jose Farmer books. So again, really good condition. They're the same kind of design as well. So I think they're same publisher. Uh, quartet book. So the Gates of Time, which might be a time travel one. A parallel universe through a temporarily opened gate in time. Okay, so a bit of a mix of both. I'll have to read it to know exactly what the stress is there. It could be a time travel one, The Gate of Time. And Dare by Philip Jose Farmer. Again, haven't read that. I haven't actually read the Riverworld series, so I have got To Your Scattered Bodies Go to read, which I will read at some point soon. Uh, but if I like his style, then I'll obviously keep going because he's an iconic author. Um, I've just added Gordon R. Dixon's Masters of Everon to my vintage classics to read. And I've got another Ursula K. Le Guin. Again, really, really good condition. Threshold. So it's rare to find a K. Le Guin book that I haven't got. So it's really cool that I found that one. Didn't know Threshold, so that's cool. Nice picture there. And then I've got five Robert Silverberg books to add to the Silverberg books I had already. So um, we've got The Magical Chronicles. So I've seen this everywhere. And I've almost bought it a number of times, but I'm buying it now because I'm going to do a deliberate dive into Robert Silverberg next year. So um, I'm really glad I've got that. And The Silent Invaders, which um, I put up on my... Uh, TBR for New World's November. Uh, there's a few here that are in, two, uh, in that video. And yeah, I might read that one. Uh, so that's a recent purchase as part of this batch of stuff I've found. Silent Invaders. I love this one. I love this cover. The Man in the Maze. Look at that cover. How cool is that? The Man in the Maze. <laughs> uh, I don't know much about it, but um, I was sold on that. And, and this has got a similar cover as well. A similar design. Possibly the same guy, I don't know, but I love the the look of it. And this is the Masks of Time. Fantastic kind of almost a almost Magritte in its style, really, in a lot of ways. Um, it's almost a Dali slash Magritte hybrid sci-fi thing. But yeah, the Masks of Time. And then I broke my golden rule and I bought a book that had really bad condition, but I really wanted to read it. And if I'm going to deep dive into Robert Silverberg, I have to read Dying Inside. So I found a copy of Dying Inside, but the front cover's got a massive gash through the middle of it. So that's a bit of a shame. But it's, the rest of it's in good condition, to be fair. So every page is there, and it's, it's, it's good condition there. It's just the front. It's got a, this horrible rip in the middle. But the rest of it's all right. So Dying Inside, that's a very important Silverberg book. So I'll be reading that one. And then I bought... What's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven Alan Dean Foster books. So he was a big part of my childhood because he did all those novelizations, and I read uh, all those novelizations. He did a lot of them. I read at least half a dozen, and um, apparently he wrote the novelization of Star Wars, which is, if you look at the cover, it says it's written by George Lucas, but it was a lie. It was written by Alan Dean Foster, and that was one of the one of the very, very early books I read when I started reading voluntarily for fun when I was a, a boy. So that really had a big effect on me. So I quite like the idea of reading more of his stuff. And I've never really... Oh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye I read. So that was a Star Wars book, but obviously that was separate from just a novelisation. That was a separate story. And I remember Splinter of the Mind's Eye was a big deal for me. But I know that this is quite a famous fantasy series, the Spell Singer series. So I've got the first one. Did I buy any of the others? No, I think the other, the other ones aren't that series. I don't think. The others are all one-offs. The Spell Singer, and the shop I got this from has got other books in that series, so I could carry on if I like this. But I need to get there, then I? Because they might sell. I love the cover. I've always loved the cover. I've always been treated... I've, I've always wanted to read it. But, so, Spell Singer. 
And then I bought Green Thieves. They had loads of Anthony Foster, so I was trying to pick ones. I didn't, I couldn't buy all of them, so I had to pick the ones that looked the most appealing. So, um, Green Thieves. And a little bit of a pun here in the title, Sentence to Prism. So, uh, that's a, a sci-fi crime novel. He was smart. He was good. He was backed by the Commonwealth's best equipment. So what could possibly go wrong? Could be like a stainless steel rack kind of thing, but possibly without the humour, I don't know. Um, Midworld. I've heard this is a good one to get for Andy Foster as well. So Midworld. Possibly a fantasy sci-fi hybrid, as you often find. Lost and Found. Uh, it's got a dog on the front. <laughs> made, immediately made me go, what? What's this? Yep. So there's that one. And then one here that I absolutely love the cover. With friends like these. So this is short stories. But have a look at this cover. I'll just get a little closer. With friends like these. I absolutely love that cover. This is exactly the kind of cover I love. And it's why um, I was really excited about getting this Spider Robinson uh, Crosstown Saloon books as well. Because they got similar covers. But so far I haven't been massively fussed about the actual stories themselves. But I'm hoping this one will be good. I love the cover though, yeah. With friends like these. And then, <laughs> um, this must be, he must have written this the same day, because then you've got Who Needs Enemies. With friends like these, Who Needs Enemies? And I think this is a, yes, yeah, another bunch of stories. So this is another short story collection. Um, again, very cool cover. So with friends like these, Who Needs Enemies? So those were the two other Andy Foster books. I've got a bunch of those. Oh, I've got another James Blish one, actually. So I should have put that together with the other one. This is a really short one. This is going to take me five minutes. This is only... It's just over 100 pages. So it's only 110... 100, 106 pages long. So it's really short. But um, it was intriguing. Midsummer Century. Uh, when John Martell's new radio telescope... Uh, refuses to function, he decides to see for himself what the trouble is. Field strength detector in hand, he clambers up the side of the waveguide and falls straight down the tube. The fall is bad enough to put him in hospital for weeks, but it doesn't. In fact, when Martel regains consciousness, it takes him a little while to grasp exactly where he is, and he's trapped inside someone else's brain about 23,000 years in the future. <laughs> Crazy. So yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, Midsummer Century. I also bought um, two of the John Carter books from Edgar Rice Burroughs. So I've never read the John Carter books. So I've bought Fighting Man of Mars, and I've read and I've bought uh, Thuvia Made of Mars, Thuvia Made of Mars, Fighting Man of Mars. I'm not those are only two in the shop. And I couldn't resist it. They're only one pound fifty, and uh, and I thought I'd read them at some point. So now I've got to get the others, because this is book four and book seven. So book four and book seven is not really the way to start, is it? Bought those. And then I bought three, four, five, six different Joe Haldeman books. So I'm really getting into Joe Haldeman. So this one I mentioned in the New World's November video, The Long Habit of Living. I'm looking forward to reading that. I might read that soon. Um, and slightly longer than the advised size for the for the event but that's all right the long habit of living that looks really good worlds which is part of a trilogy so um i think i've got one yeah i've got the i've got one other in the trilogy it says worlds and i've also got worlds in enough worlds enough and time so if i like worlds i'll get worlds apart before i read that obviously so I've got those. And Mind Bridge. I've got Mind Bridge. Again, I hadn't heard of these books, but I couldn't resist it. Tool of the Trade, by John Haldeman. I remember the plot for this one looked really good. Okay, Nick Foley is on the run. The KGB and the CIA are both after him. Not surprising, since he is a Soviet sleeper whose cover has been blown. But Nick has more than state secrets to hide. If he tells a stranger to drive him a thousand miles, it'll happen. If he tells a pusher to OD on his own heroin, the pusher will do it. 
Nick's strange power is vital to both sides, and neither of them intend to let him keep it to himself. But neither the CIA nor the KGB can imagine Nick's final desperate throw of the dice. Tool of the trade. And then another one I've got, dealing in futures. So I'll end up having, um, I don't know, I've, I've already got a bunch of Joe Haldeman, so I'll probably have about 10 or 12 books by him once I've read those as well. Um, so that'd be cool. So that's all the vintage stuff. So I bought some other things as well. So I found this one, which I had heard of, but hadn't got it yet. Do You Dream of Terror 2 uh, by Temi O. Um, so I've heard about this. It's apparently really good. So let me know in the comments if you've read this and what you think of it. I have finally got Project Hail Mary. So I'm very excited to read this. And if I wasn't doing lots of events, I'd probably get stuck into this. But I'll see if I can squeeze it in there before the end of the year but I, I'm very excited about reading this everyone loves it and a lot of people say it's better than The Martian which is quite a statement and uh, he's just really good at writing isn't he? so yeah Project Hail Mary very excited about having this so I saw it in paperback yes um, I bought a book um, that was kind of influenced by the fourth prompt in the New World's November and this is I had seen it before and I was tempted but then I thought let's just go for it so this is a new anthology series called Robots and Revolution and it's all about AI and robots and it's got authors like Peter F. Hamilton, Annalee Newitz, Alistair Reynolds, Ken Liu and Sarah Pinska. Uh, so those are some of the authors that are in there. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Okay so this is veering away from science fiction now. So I found this in a charity shop and I didn't know anything about it but I looked him up and he's quite an important figure in literature so I thought I'd give it a go. So Saul Bellow. So tell me if you know Saul Bellow's stuff and what you think of him. This is Seize the Day. So quite a short one. But it's part of the Penguin Modern Classics. And he's writing at a time that I always find quite intriguing. Seize the Day. Have you read that? Is that any good? Have I made a massive mistake? I mean, to be fair, it's not going to take me long. Again, another book that's just around 100 pages. So not very long. But I bought that one. Um, as... I've mentioned briefly before, I haven't done the proper announcement video, but I mentioned briefly that next year I'm going to be doing a series of videos called Fables, Fairy Tales and Folklore, when I'm going to be looking at fairy tales from around the world and, and um, fables and that. And one of the books I really wanted to include in my investigation into that, I knew about it but I hadn't bought it at this point, and I've bought it now, and that's this one, by uh, Marina Warner. From the Beast to the Blonde, and this is an analysis of fairy tales and um, the content and the nature of the storytellers as well, so how these stories come about. So, yeah, I've, I've always wanted to read this. I'm very excited now, now that I've got it. She's done, she's done tons of books on this sort of thing, um, and this is a, a good, hefty investigation into that. Similarly, I've got another second alternative version for the Arabian Nights. So, Tales from a Thousand Nights. I've already bought a book of the Arabian Nights and I made sure it was a particular translation because that seemed to be what a lot of people say was the best translation. But then I bought a Collins Classics and there isn't anything else in it and I was expecting to see the Aladdin story and the Sinbad stories in there and they weren't in there and I was like, oh. This, I found quite recent, well, yeah, last, uh, over the last few days, this is a penguin version. It's very pretty. It's a nice hardback version. It's really, really nice. But it's it's got um, those stories that I thought were going to be in the other one in it. So the Aladdin's in there and some Sinbad stories are in there. And it's going to have, because it's a penguin class, it's got an introduction and some extra bits to it, which is really nice. So and what I can do, though, is I could read, for some of them, I could read both translations. And I have some, an opinion about whether or not I particularly liked a, a uh, particular translator. So, Tales from a Thousand Nights. Which leaves me to the last two books. And the last two books is part of this ongoing um, strange habit I've <laughs> developed of buying J.G. Ballard books when I've only actually read a few short stories of his. And I've got so much now, it's ridiculous. I've got uh, one shelf which has got... Uh, well, it's half the shelf is his books and these are big tomes I've added to that
the short stories collection volume one and short story collection volume two so so yeah uh, i'm gonna gonna get through these as well i might i don't know i might dip into this for new world's november but probably concentrate on his novels for a bit i don't know i mean it could be that his short stories are his best work i don't know what what would you recommend what is what if you if you know jg ballard's stuff what do you think are his best short stories because i could hone into them first if i hadn't read them already so there we go 42 books um i've been very lucky recently i've got so much to read so much good stuff what have you read from that lot and um let me know what you thought of them thanks a lot bye